Good day or good evening. Let's look at these terms right here, antigens and allergies. So antigens, you should remember, they are actually proteins. Lots of things are made up of proteins in biological organisms and cells. Proteins are coded for by DNA and they get produced through transcription and translation. So in this case, we're talking about antigens as they relate to the immune system. So we've got some images here. Over here, you can see some bacterial cells. Here's a image of a bacterial cell or some other kind of cell doesn't really matter but the point is is that all living things all organisms actually have these little proteins on the surface of their cells they're called antigens and it's the basis upon which we can actually recognize foreign organisms or foreign particles that are inside our body we can also tell the difference between ourselves our own cells and then other types of cells so we're going to see this and how it relates to blood types as well. Um, it's the antigens that are on the surface of these actual molecules, uh, on the surface of these cells, sorry, bacteria and viral particles that actually trigger the antibody production and therefore your immune system to kick in and try to fight these things off. So it's important to remember that when bacteria actually gets into your body, or here's a uh, image of what a virus is supposed to look like, or one type of virus, when these things get into your body, your body doesn't like recognize, hey, that's the tuberculosis bacterium in there, or that's the HIV virus that's in there. Your body is only responding to these little protein antigens that are on the surface of these actual things. And here's a little image over here that kind of shows how this actually happens. Your white blood cells, specifically your B lymphocytes, are actually making um, their own proteins that are trying to attach to these antigens. And these are called antibodies. So you should have already reviewed this or understand the procedure of how your B lymphocytes get activated. But in essence, you're producing some good guy proteins that are called antibodies, and they're attaching to the bad guy proteins, which are the antigens. And that's just depending on the actual situation, your own cells actually have antigens on them, which could be foreign to another organism. So take your time to actually go over the written notes over here and make sure that these phrases kind of make sense to you. Uh, let's look over here on the right. Pathogens, it's important to know that some pathogens only infect a specific species. So one example is polio in humans, the particular polio virus and how it affects humans only. And then there are other pathogens that can actually cross between species. For example, uh, tuberculosis being transferred from cattle to badgers. Even I doubt you knew that before. I surely didn't. But there are certain types of pathogens that can actually get from one type of species to another type of species. So uh, the curriculum wants you to be able to make a distinction that there are some types of pathogens that only stay within the species and others that can actually cross the species barrier. So we're kind of scared about that when it comes to things like bird flu. I should have drawn a nice chicken over here, but I didn't have time to. So that's an example here where we actually have diseases that can pass from animals to humans. So bird flu, uh, pig flu, all these things that have been in the news in the past 10 years and everybody's freaked out about them. So that actual process, it's called zoonosis, which is basically when the disease can pass from an animal to a human. So I did just mention that in the context of bacteria versus humans, the antigens are the protein markers that are on the surface of the bacterial cells, and then we're actually producing the antibodies. But that's just in that particular uh, situation. So it is important to understand that your own cells actually have antigens on them. And here's a perfect place to talk about it. If you've heard of blood types, obviously you've heard of blood types, you've done genetic crosses with different types of blood types to determine if your parents are your real parents. Maybe you don't need to do that just in case, but we have four different blood groups, blood type groups. We have blood type A, blood type B, AB, and O. I happen to be AB, or at least that's what everybody says, because apparently I have multiple personality issues. But I happen to be AB, and that just means a little bit that I'm kind of rare, but it also means that I can accept blood from any of these other blood groups. And that's why people say that AB 
blood type group are selfish, but if you don't believe in that stuff like I don't, then don't worry about it too much. Blood type O group is considered to be the universal donors. You probably heard about that before, but this is actually what's going on on the surface of your red blood cells in terms of the antigens that are present and the types of antibodies that you actually have in your blood. So what this means is that if something comes into your bloodstream that has an antigen that you have antibodies for, your body is actually going to attack those red blood cells, just assuming that they're foreigners. So this is the basis for for which types of blood you can actually receive and which type you can actually donate. So take me, for example, uh, I have on my red blood cells these antigens for A and B. So I have A type antigens and B type antigens, and I don't have antibodies in my body that are attaching to any of these. So I'm not actually killing off my own cells. If you're blood type B, you have a B type antigen that's present, but in your blood, you have anti-A antibodies, which is a good thing because you don't have any anti you you actually don't have any a antigens on the surface of your red blood cells so you can see how all of this correlates together and if your blood type o you have these kind of wimpy little o antigens no disrespect to you you have these little o antigens but in your body you actually have antibodies for a and B. So if any of this stuff gets into your body, uh, you start to attack it like crazy. So blood type O people can only receive blood type O from people who are blood type O. I hope that's okay. Anyways, moving on. So here's just a little phrase that describes what I was trying to explain here. Uh, there are O and A and B type antigens. Uh, o, this type is always present in everybody. So unfortunately, this is just a consequence of us being human and that we have variations that exist. The bottom line, unfortunately, is that blood does the same thing for all of us, right? Red blood cells, they carry oxygen. Why can't we just be able to share all this stuff with each other? But because of these variations that have come about through evolution, unfortunately, we're split into these four different groups of blood types. And we need to understand this very well. We could even produce kids that don't have our own blood type. And the placental barrier between the mother and the baby actually uh, helps to maintain the blood in kind of separate compartments. Like stuff can pass between the blood but you can't actually share these red blood cells. Otherwise, the, I don't know, the baby might be attacking the mother's immune system and vice versa. So this kind of leads us into this idea that our body is not as awesome as we like to think it is. Obviously, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. And one of those things is allergies where your immune system starts responding to something that shouldn't actually harm you. Like a lot of people have pollen al allergies here in Japan. It's a big deal uh, a lot of pollen and some of these people are including myself actually becoming more susceptible to kind of allergic reactions and sneezing and itchy eyes and all kinds of things and so people will wear a lot of masks here just to kind of protect themselves from the pollen not so much to uh, protect themselves from coughing people on the trains and things like that so Allergy, immune response to a substance that is usually harmless, causes the over-secretion of a substance called histamine, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but you know it as uh, itchy eyes, sneezing, inflammation. It can get really bad for a lot of people as well, too. So you can take some drugs that kind of block this histamine response. If there was no histamine, you would be okay for the most part, but the main thing that people are suffering from is actually our own body's response to these things that are visiting our body and are causing our body to think that there's some bad stuff going on. So histamine is this protein that's basically secreted by um, two other types of white blood cells. You've got basophils and you have mast cells. You only need to be able to recall these if you're asked kind of where histamine comes from. But the main white blood cells, and there's a lot of different types that you need to understand, are the ones that are involved in antibody production. So you've got your, your helper T cells, and then you've got your B lymphocytes and plasma cells and memory cells, which are basically just B lymphocytes that are left over. So these two types of white blood cells, basophils and mast cells, secrete this protein called histamine, which basically results in all these kinds of effects over here. So what histamine actually does is 
where these places where the infection is actually happening or where you're actually uh, coming into contact with these antigens that are making your body go crazy. They cause your blood vessels to dilate. So more blood goes there. If more blood goes there, you can actually have supposedly more white blood cells going to visit the infected site and try to help out. Uh, there's more fluid flow you can see here containing those immune components like the white blood cells with the antibodies and everything as well too so this is involved in both specific and non-specific responses so specific responses we're talking about specific immunity where you have macrophages and helper t cells and b cells that are actually trying to produce the correct antibody to help mess uh, and fight off the actual infection. The non-specific re responses are in general, just general responses where you have macrophages rushing to try and um, take down any kind of foreign pathogen that has some antigens there. So there's both systems, the specific and non-specific responses that we've talked about earlier. So overall, you should be able to connect. There's a lot of different ideas here, and this is maybe like four or five different syllabus statements that are put together, but you should be able to see a relationship between uh, antigens, what they are, where they come from, how your body responds to them, and how they can actually go wrong and not necessarily have to be a big deal, but unfortunately, they become a big deal through allergies, and also it helps to determine um, the blood types that we have and therefore and also prevents us, this is the sucky part, prevents us from being able to be universal donors and acceptors for blood all of the time. I guess that does help to limit the number of illegal murders that might happen to try and increase the amount of blood that you have because you have to kind of figure it out. So maybe it's a protective mechanism that has evolved. I don't know, conspiracy theory.